So, you want to be a wizard in Index Card RPG, but you're not quite sure how the magic system works. When you tried to summon a group of horses for your friends, you ended up summoning a boat. And while an awesome mode of transportation, it doesn't quite help you get away from a group of Ogdru cultists chasing you down a forest road. So let's take a look at ICRPG Magic, uh, both in the Core 2nd Edition and in the Master Edition, as well as the difference between the basic and the more advanced system in each. But let's start with Core and that basic method of casting. In ICRPG Core 2nd Edition, the basic magic system is roll to cast, which means you need to meet or beat the target just like any other action, taking into account uh, any bonuses you get from your intelligence or wisdom as you roll your d20. Now there are intelligence spells, which means you roll your intelligence whenever you're casting them, but these spells take inventory. It's the idea of being an arcane collector, collecting books, scrolls, amulets, relics, artifacts that fill up your inventory but give you access to these powerful spells. If you lose the item, then you lose the spell. But you can also trade these between players and the NPCs. On the other hand, you have wisdom powers. They don't take inventory because they're invoking more of a feeling of imbuing them with your soul, with your mind. As you learn them, you learn them forever. They don't take inventory, but you can't trade them, but you also can't lose them. When you're trying to find more spells, you gain more as loot, which means as you're going through adventures and rummaging through supplies and other things, you may find a spell, whether it's wisdom or intelligence. And when you're starting out as a wizard, creating your character, it doesn't explicitly say how many you start with, but often all you need to do is replace with the starting equipment in your character creation. So rather than grabbing a sword, you replace that sword with a spell in one of your items that you take starting out. Now the basic casting system in Master Edition follows the same process with a few alterations. For example, rather than replacing your starting equipment with spells, starting loot grants you a number of spells in character creation. You still roll to cast, you still use your intelligence or wisdom bonus depending on the types of spells, and you still use the same spell list. But let's look at an example um, with our wizard here in a boat. Our wizard here has an ally that they're trying to help, and they want to cast the Divine Shield because a cloud of acid rain is coming and potentially will harm our friends. So our caster decides to cast Divine Shield, which is a wisdom spell. All they need to do is know that it's a wisdom spell know that the target is set to something like a 12, look at their wisdom bonus, which is say a plus two, and roll a d20 and attempt to meet or beat the target. In this case, rolling a two is a fail. On the next round, I try again and roll a 17 with an easy target. I successfully pass and meet the target and the spell goes off. My ally is now guarded and protected by a divine shield gaining some bonuses and protection from the acid rain that's coming. There is no limit to how many spells you can cast. You get one action per turn. You could be casting a spell every action using the basic system. And the really limiting factor is the target. You always have to meet or beat the target when you're trying to cast those spells. And so even if a player or you are trying to cast a spell every round, there's still a chance that they might not go off every round. So don't worry about um, casting too many spells. Now, after you get a good grasp of the basic system, eventually you might start looking for something a little bit more advanced, something that adds a little more complexity than just rolling to cast and a small list of spells. You want something more. Well, that's where the advanced magic system comes in, in both 2nd edition and in Master Edition. In 2nd edition, we were introduced to the advanced magic system with the ICRPG magic book. Now this system adds complexity and depth to casting in ICRPG. Complexity is neither good nor bad, it's just something to be aware of, but it is completely optional. Most games are played with the, the basic system, just rolling to cast, 
but any game can be included um, at the GM's discretion with these more advanced rules. So how does the advanced magic system work in second edition? Well, essentially spells have a power between one and four. They also have a level between one and four. And each spell also has a cost, which is equal to the level of the spell times the power that you choose to cast, which you can choose before casting between that one and four, while the level is set in stone with the uh, spell itself, which then equals the cost in health points. So your health pool is your pool of resources that determines uh, if you can cast or not. It is still roll to cast using intelligence or wisdom. Intelligence is usually the default, but working with your GM, it may make sense to roll wisdom. Um, and you're still trying to meet or beat the target. The cost only applies on a success. So if you're trying to cast uh, Divine Shield again or something else, you don't reduce your health, uh, your hit points down until you succeed on the spell. But you also have the option to burn to cast, which is to guarantee a success, but you lose the spell until safety. Now what safety means is totally up to you and your GM to determine in the adventure that you're on. Additionally, there are 12 types of magic coming from things like arcane, eldritch, elder, fire, glyph, matter, all sorts of different types. And you can learn spells of a max level. So again, there's one, two, three, or four levels, but you have to know a number of spells known in that type. So in order to learn a level four matter spell, you need to know four other elders of matter spells in order to learn that fourth one. If you learn a fifth spell, you still can't go past four because level five spells haven't been discovered yet. They'd be quite dangerous. Now let's look at an example. We've got our wizard here on a boat and they're coming up to a waterfall. And rather than going over the falls themselves, the wizard decides to cast Astral Flight. And so Astral Flight is rolling intelligence or wisdom. It is a level three spell and the wizard can cast it at one to four power and the power is uh, multiplies the number of rounds that the astral flight stays into effect. Depending on the power level, the cost could be anywhere between three HP and 12 HP. Yes, 12, that's over the standard one heart, which is what most characters have in health points. Your, your wizard might drop um, by casting the spell, but that's where it's awesome. It can be a heroic sacrifice or a expenditure past their limits to ensure that they get the number of rounds that they need or the level of power that they want to cast. And so all they have to do is roll and with their bonus, if they succeed, they lose the HP, but the spell is cast. If they fail, the next round is easy. They try again but on that first round, they don't lose any HP. When it comes to starting spells, you gain one spell in three different types. It's listed in the book. Um, additionally, the spells are listed in a slightly different way. In basic method, it's usually a line or two, but in the advanced magic system, you have a little bit more depth to it. You have things like the spell name, the level, you have the type, the total effect, which is listed out here. You also have the duration, which is how long it lasts. So in this case, one round per power for astral flight. The target, so in this case, it applies only to the self only, right? So acquisition is describing and uh, suggesting ways that you can gain that spell. So for astral flight, you could gain this through a scroll, an ember scroll, or through studies and then you have a little bit of lore. And so you can see this advanced system adds depth and complexity to casting, but it also takes a step away from what you might be experienced and with, with the uh, basic system. Now advanced magic in Master Edition tries to take 
what second edition did and bring it into the fold with the rest of what you might be familiar with with other systems. So in Advanced Magic Master Edition, you still have spells with powers and levels and different types. But for example, the spell cost is changed to be the power, which is again one through four, times two stun points or SP, and that equates to the cost in stun points. In Master Edition, it introduces a separate pool to pool from um, when casting magic. Every character starts with 10 stun points so that you have your health and your stun points. Um, very similar to Vigilante City, the superhero setting in ICRPG. You recover stun points by resting or other magical means rather than through recovery as kind of described in Vigilante City. Whenever you are attacked or hit successfully, whether you ignore the damage or not, you lose a stun point. And then when you are at zero stun points, it means you can't cast any spells. So guarding that pool is very critical. There are only three types of magic instead, Holy, Arcane, and Infernal, rather than 12 in second edition. And when you're creating your character, you start with three level one spells in, uh, in those various types. Additionally, when you hit 10 points of spell mastery, you can uh, declare what one type, so for example, Holy, Arcane, or Infernal, and any spells in that type, and only one type, um, cost one S, uh, stun point no matter what. So you can really focus in on holy spells, arcane spells, or infernal spells, and master those to gain a bonus um, to your stun points. Additionally, learning higher level spells you, by knowing three spells of the previous level. So for example, if I want to learn a second level spell, I need to know three level one spells. Or if I want to learn a level four spells, I need to know three level three spells. Now let's look at an example uh, in each various methods. So in our situation with our wizard, we have a group of cultists here who are trying to summon an eldritch god. And in Doom Vault, you need to destroy a crystal that's hanging above the uh, the pit. Now, our wizard knows Glyphs of Fire, which is um, can be cast and can do some ma major damage when when it goes off. Now, in second edition, what you would do is you would determine the spell uh, level, which would be like a level one, times by the power, which is between one and four, and then that equal that out to the cost in health points. So if a level one spell is cast at level four, one times four would be four HP, and it would go off successfully when our caster casts it, and he would lose that many points. But then uh, the glyph would go off for some extra damage. Compare that to Master Edition, it would be determining the level one spell, its power one through four, so we do say four times two stun points um, would be eight. If I only did it at level one, it would be two SP. I would reduce it from my stun points pool. And then the total damage would be the power multiplied uh, D12 and your ultimate. So it would end up, if I cast it at level four, it'd be four D12 plus ultimate. And that's how much damage I would do to the crystal. And it would probably be pretty epic as it goes off into a mighty explosion. And that's essentially all there is to the various systems within ICRPG Magic. You have your basic and your advanced. Advanced is optional. The basic is always there and works well. Anything within this can be adjusted by the GM. But hopefully as you start learning to be a wizard and summoning horses instead of boats, you can become more proficient as a, a spellcaster, that the flexibility and DIY nature of ICRPG can allow you to create new spells, more advanced spells, do what you need to do. And so if you're interested in learning about magic, start with basic, get a feel for that, move on to the advanced magic, test it out, and then begin exploring and delving into the arcane nature 
just as like you would be if you were a wizard studying these for real.